Hi guys, this is Rebecca from Heartbeat. You've probably met me before or see me floating around if you do your classes at PNE. If you don't know or you've not met me before, then hi. I am a trainee health psychologist and one of Heartbeat's wellbeing coordinators. And what I've decided to do is put together this series of four videos looking at stress, what it is and how we can overcome it. Because we are going through quite a stressful time at the minute you know there's been a lot of change over the past few weeks we're all social distancing self-isolating and we're on lockdown and you're probably hearing a lot of phrases like i'm so stressed i'm stressed out this is stressful and you yourself are probably experiencing some level of stress with everything that's going on in the world at the moment so these videos there's four of them the first one which is going to be this one is looking at stress, what it is, why we experience it, and why it's so bad for us. Because I think if we can understand something, like at its root, why it happens and why it has this effect on us, then we stand a much better chance of being able to face it head on and overcome it. The second video is gonna be called Stress and the Brain's Process, and it's all about the different stops that your brain makes when it's trying to figure out stress and how to overcome it. The last two videos, they're going to be looking at different coping techniques that you can use at home to reduce the amount of stress that you're feeling and maybe even overcome it. So the first of those two is going to be looking at problem focused techniques and the second emotion focused techniques. But we're going to start here with the first video and if at any point you have any questions please drop me an email down here and let's just get started. Okay, so what we want to know is why do we experience stress and kind of what's going on with our bodies when that happens. And the interesting thing is that stress is something that originally developed to save our lives in dangerous situations. So if you imagine thousands of years ago, we've got our early man here and he's out and about and comes across something dangerous in his environment, like a predator. To save his life, his brain is going to kick off a process which is going to cause him to either fight or flight. So he's going to try to fight off this danger so he can survive or he's going to run away from it so he can survive. Now as you can imagine, to fight or to flight you're going to need a lot of energy. You're going to need to be faster, you're going to need to be stronger and you're going to need a lot of stamina. And so to make that happen, your body goes through a number of processes. So first of all, your brain detects the danger in a part called the amygdala. And then that tells your hypothalamus, another part of the brain, to trigger your central nervous system, which then kicks off your adrenal glands. And they're going to re release hormones like adrenaline and cortisol into your body. And the adrenaline, that's going to make you stronger, going to make you faster, going to give you more of that stamina. And the cortisol is going to try and make that response last for as long as you need it to make sure that you can get out of that situation and survive. Now, those hormones going around your body, that's going to make a number of things happen to make it easier for you to be stronger, faster and have that stamina. So you're going to start breathing faster. You're going to get lots of oxygen into your lungs, lots of oxygen into your blood, so that can be delivered to the muscles. You're going to start having an increased heart rate, so the blood goes round your body faster and gets the resources that your muscles need to the right place. Your muscles are going to tense up, so they're ready to go. And you're going to start sweating, because it's a lot of energy that your body is putting out. Your pupils are going to dilate, because you're going to be on high alert, taking in everything from your environment to make sure you're responding appropriately. And to keep this response going for as long as possible, your body's also going to divert energy from other areas that aren't as essential when you're trying to provide a life and death response. So if we go back to our scenario here, we can see that it is the predator that is the stressor. So anything that triggers that response where your body wants to fight or flight is referred to as the stressor. And these are the responses that you can have. That fight or flight to try and survive. So your body trying to survive, that's the response. And so the stress response is something that can be life-saving in a dangerous situation. You know, it gives you that strength, speed and stamina to be able to fight and defeat that threat or to be able to run away from it and live another day. 
However, as humans, we've started to experience stress more chronically, more long term over long periods of time. And that's quite damaging to your body if you think about the pressure it puts your body under. And this is because as we've developed as a society, you know, we've grown and now we have these different pressures on us that are threatening. So if we dropped our early man into Preston Town Centre, all of a sudden he's going to be having lots of different types of stress. And they might not be immediately life threatening, but if something were to go wrong with one of these issues, it could affect that the way that you live. It could affect your way of life. And that is quite threatening itself because, you know, change is something that we don't really like as humans. And so things that are in our everyday lives are triggering this stress response. But then because it is everyday life, we can't just escape it. You know, we can't just fight it off and be done with it. We can't just run away. And so we're in this constant state of feeling stress. You know, a feeling like our way of life is under threat. And now in this new situation that we're experiencing with COVID-19, we now have these additional pressures which are going to be causing us stress. And we can't just run away from them. Again, you know, we might be stuck in isolation. You know, we're not seeing our loved ones. You know, our way of life is changing again. And that can be quite stressful. And so what we want to do is start to learn how we can manage stress, how we can overcome it. And hopefully over the course of this series, we'll help you to do that. So if we think now with all of these everyday pressures that we've got that are triggering this stress response, our bodies are going to be having a number of negative effects. So kind of that long term exposure to that high pressure of you know, the lungs breathing faster, your heart pounding, it's going to give you things like headaches. You're going to feel weak. You're going to feel tired because your body is exhausting itself trying to keep this response up because it can't escape the danger that it's seeing. You're going to feel sick from that. And sometimes you might even experience things like panic attacks when it just all gets too much and it gets overwhelming. And also you're unfortunately in increasing your risk of more serious health issues such as blood clots as the blood is going so fast around your body that it can cause damage to your arteries which then get clotted up the clots can break off and it can result in things like heart attacks and strokes and pulmonary embolisms some more signs that you might be getting stressed are these ones and when I mentioned before about the body diverting energy away from other processes to provide this response these are the side effects so in a, a life or death situation your body isn't too concerned with making sure your skin is nice and moisturized and soft and so you're gonna experience some dry sensitive skin your digestion is also going to slow down to provide the stress response and so you might get diarrhea constipation upset stomach and you might also start to feel quite unwell. You know, we often hear the phrase, oh, I'm just feeling a bit under the weather. You know, I've got a bit of a cold. And that might be because you're stressed. Your body's diverting energy from the immune system, which means the little bugs that normally would get in your body and be fought off before you even knew you were ill are now being given that chance to grow because they're not being fought off as aggressively. One thing I would recommend is if you are experiencing any of these kinds of symptoms and you are worried, don't just immediately go, oh, I must be stressed. If you are concerned, please seek the advice of a medical professional. But these are just some of the signs that maybe now it's time to take control of the stress that you're experiencing and try and restore your body to normal. Try and slow down what your brain is perceiving, slow down how your body is reacting to that. And that's what we're hopefully going to do in the next videos. So we've come to the end of the first video and I hope now you understand a bit better the kind of process of stress and how it affects your body and with that how important it is to start taking steps to overcome it. So in the next video we're going to be looking at how your brain processes stress so please go look for it on the Heartbeat YouTube channel and make sure you take care, stay safe and we'll see you very very soon.